Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Closet. My name is Kevin and tonight I'm doing something that I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. It's Calumet 15 versus Calumet 16. What difference does a year make? All right, so I haven't done like a full-fledged tournament or anything to try to figure out which of the bourbons in the closet are like really my favorites, but I am very sure that the Calumets would be on that list. If they're not at the very top, they're certainly in the running. These have always been some of my favorites. Uh, the 15 and the 16 are, in my prior experience, very different. I believe that this is a foregone conclusion and that I much prefer the 16, this one right here, over the 15, but I haven't ever actually tasted them heads up before. So let's do that right now. I'm going to do this one, so I haven't tasted either of these in, I actually don't remember when the last time was I tasted these. So I have no short-term memory of either of them. And let's do it blind, spin them around, and try this out for real. Starting with glass number one. <laughs> I mean, this bourbon is so good. Oh, that nose is amazing. Oh, how do I even describe this? It is so beautiful. It has a lot of rich notes to it, maybe almost like a maple syrup kind of thing. Like the sweetness is strong, but without being like the predominant note because it also has these beautiful kind of baking spice notes that are paired in there. Tonight, I wanna to say I'm getting like a little hint of banana. There's a little bit of a corn note that's through it as well part of that sweetness. It's just, I really, really love the way that this smells. Okay, let's taste glass number one. Wow. Oh my goodness. The palate really matches the nose. You get a beautiful sweetness. It has this mouthfeel. It's not a thick mouthfeel. In fact, if anything, it's almost on the thinner side, but it has some body to it especially when it first hits the tongue. And it, it's ah, it's really nice. I like right where it sits. And it very quickly goes from that nice kind of sweet caramel thing into a lot of, uh, there's kind of an alcohol proofingness that's hitting me. It's the first thing I've had today. So go figure. Um, but then the spices that it comes with and the barrel impact is so prevalent without being at all overpowering. You would think at 15 years or 16 years that the impact of that barrel would kind of overwhelm it and make it be too much. Uh, if you're not big into bourbons in particular, or if you've had exposure to the scotch scene, you might expect that a product being in the barrel longer maybe mellows it out or something like that, but that's not the case in bourbons. Generally speaking, the longer that something gets aged, the more of these kind of wood impacts you get, no surprise there. And those woodiness can bring a lot of bitter notes, a lot of dry notes, and you can get that to a certain point where it's just too much. It overwhelms everything else that the bourbon might have had. That is not happening in the Calumet 15 or 16, whichever one this is. Hmm. Having tasted it and going back to the smells, to the nose, we gotta be fancy about this. <laughs> I'm getting less of that maple syrup sweetness now, and I'm getting more of those baking spices and that kind of corn note. And I'm not upset about that at all. That banana hint is still there as well. It's a very relaxed sweetness. It's not overly sweet at all. And then that little bit of a bite, just to let you know you're drinking a bourbon, and it transitions so quickly into baking spices, and the baking spices then transition into this kind of barrel, tingly, drying sensation, and it's lovely. Let's move on to glass number two. Oh, wow. This immediately seems a lot richer, like thicker. The, like the, it smells thicker. There's a little bit of a magic marker 
character on this. It's almost like that little banana note from Glass One has turned into something a little more Magic Marker-esque. Not in an off-putting way. Actually, I really like it. Oh, wow. Huh. That is more aggressive and more, more drying. And sometimes Barrel imparts this flavor that I don't really know how to describe. It's this a little bit of an astringent, balsa woody something. And I'm picking that up immediately in here. And I don't remember picking that up in glass one. Wow. That is so much more aggressive. It's so much drier. It's a lot less sweet. I feel like it's a little bit of a thicker mouthfeel. And it really kind of finishes in a very dry spot. So this is where this gets interesting. Um, knowing nothing... I would immediately assume that this must be the higher aged product because like I just talked about, that age can bring that drying barrel impact that this seems to have more of. However, my recollection of these is that the 15 year was significantly harsher than the 16 year. So I don't know what to go with. Do you go with sort of logic and expectation for what an extra year might deliver? Or do you go with your long-term memory and assume that this one therefore must be the 16? I'm gonna taste them again and make sure that I really do prefer the first one, and then we'll go from there. I was clearing my palate with water, and I wonder if that might actually be impacting the bitterness. It's not something I've noticed before, but this tastes more bitter than it did the first time through, and I was thinking glass two tasted more bitter after drinking water as well. Okay, well, I'm gonna say that I have a preference for glass one, and I'm also gonna go ahead and guess, just based on my recollection, that that might be the 16, making this one the 15. I won't be surprised if I'm wrong about that. Let's check. Glass number one is the 15, and glass number two is in fact the 16 year. How interesting. Aha. So, you, so like I said, my recollection was that the 16 was on a different level, that the 16 was less harsh and less bitter and more well-rounded. That was not my experience just now. All right, let's spin them and we will see if the experiment repeats. <laughs> okay, I don't remember which one's which. Let's start with number one once again. Oh, very nice. I do think I'm picking up on that toasted note, maybe magic marker note again. It's aggressive, it's dry. I was getting a little more of almost a honeyed sweetness at first, but the sweetness disappears so quickly. And the finish is long. Man, the finish on that is, that's, that's an impressive, yeah. That hangs around. Glass number two. Oh, yeah, that nose. It's actually interesting. The nose on glass one is way more intense. Like it really jumps out at you. And the nose on glass two is softer, like I'm working for it more. But what I'm getting out of it is more baking spices. I'm not picking up on that little hint of banana like I was originally. I think I've just acclimated away to that away. The bitterness and dryness of these is really strong and I actually think the more that I'm drinking them, the more of that that I'm getting from it, not less. I'm not acclimating to that barrel dryness. It's just compounding on itself. But even so, I still think that I liked glass two here. The middle of the palette has these lovely spice notes and the finish just isn't as dry. Ooh, going quick back though. I got a lot more sweetness out of glass one just now. More honeyed. It may have to do with sort of how long you let it rest on different parts of your tongue. I kind of let that hit the front of my tongue and swallowed it fast that time. And I enjoyed it a lot more. I'm not getting the dries and the bitters, especially on the finish. Huh, that almost, huh. Well, I'm gonna stick with it. That almost threw it back into contention here, but I think that glass two now is the 15 and was still my favorite. And it is. Well, this was kind of a big upset. Never in a million years would my recollection of these have thought that I preferred the 15 but I sure did when I did them blind twice in a row. 15 year old, single rack black, Calumet Farm, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. 
Uh, this is 105 proof, and the 16 is 106 proof. So, man, they are smack dab in the same ballpark. All right, well, there's no information worth knowing on the bottle, but there's some information worth knowing online. The first useful thing is the mash bill. Uh, they claim that these are apparently all the same. It's 74% corn, 18% rye, and 8% malted barley, which they classify as a high rye mixture. Hey, no wonder I like it, huh? Kind of a high rye guy. Uh, this bourbon is not distilled by the company that makes it. Uh, the company that makes it is the Western Spirits Beverage Company, which is owned by Sazerac, the giant conglomerate. Uh, the company that maybe distilled it is supposedly Barton. Uh, Barton makes uh, famously 1792. That's probably the most famous Barton product. All right, so Calumet Farm bourbon is delicious. I like it a lot. But it is also very expensive. I believe that I paid $130 for the 15 year, which made it the most expensive bourbon that I had ever purchased. And then I found the 16 year and I purchased it too for $140, making it the most expensive bourbon that I have ever purchased. Should you go buy a $140 bourbon? I don't know. I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money. I'm just talking about how good the bourbon is. And the bourbon is, it's its really good. I mean, it's, uh, it's good. This is the 16 again. Remember, the 16 didn't win tonight. Mmm, <laughs> Mm. Oh, how did it not win? <laughs> it's really good bourbon. It's too expensive. I would. I don't think that I would would spend one hundred and forty dollars again for it. Even though, like I said, it may actually be one of my favorite things in the closet. But that's. I mean, that's a high price point. Uh, there's a positive side to high price points. You can find it more often. Anyway, that's the story about Calumet Farm. It's good stuff. And uh, in a huge upset tonight, the 15-year one. Uh, well, this has been another episode of The Whiskey Closet. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.